First, I'm going to begin by setting the area equal to a function of x. So I've got a regular integral. I replace b with x. When b is replaced with x, x is an independent variable, so it can move along this curve. And as x move al moves along this curve, the area will change. And the area is now a function of x. So g of x is the area as a function of x, where x is a variable up here at the top of this integral. So next, I'm going to set up an area problem here where I've got a rectangle and I'm trying to approximate the area here and there are two ways I can do that. One, I can look at the area as a function of x and say well g of x plus h since g of x is an area, it's this whole area, g of x plus h minus g of x, that will give me this area. Also f of x times h will give me that area approximately as well. So if I divide both sides by h, then I have a, a limit problem basically, and I take the limit of h as h goes to 0, and then it's approximately the derivative of f of x. Now with the rectangles, it's an approximation, but it leads me on the right path. So what I'm going to do basically is do the same thing, but I'm going to use nothing but integrals. So it won't be an approximation. So I'm going to write out this same problem up here, but I'm just going to write it out in integral form. So what I'm going to have is that g of x plus h minus g of x and instead of writing it out as a rectangle, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use integrals like this. So I'm going to replace this f of x h part with integrals. So this is equal to x plus h a and then minus g of x, which would be x a Then I can separate out this integral using the properties of integrals. This will be from x plus h to x, and then I will add it to x plus a. I mean x to a. still got this other one. So these ones will subtract out. I'm left with this. So I've done that. Next I need to find a way to take the limit as h goes to 0 and have that limit mean something. So I can divide both sides by h here. So next thing I need to do is find a way of evaluating the limit as h goes to zero because I can't really do that here. So what I'm going to do is use the extreme value theorem on the interval x, x plus h. 
So what the extreme value theorem says that there's going to be some number u that is going to be equal to the minimum if there is some number u along this interval that is the absolute minimum value for as in like a, as in like a y value and as well that there is a value v that is a, a maximum value and that makes sense I mean on this interval there's going to be some value that's the smallest and some value that's the largest and what it's going to say is that at any point, what I'm going to do now is set up an inequality and say, well, at any point along here, the maximum y value times h is going to be less, or the minimum value, that's what I meant to say, the minimum is going to be less than or equal to uh, this integral value. and it's going to be less than the maximum one. So I'm going to say that the function value of u, which is the minimum value times h, less than or equal to this F of V times H. I'm going to put a graph of this just so it makes more sense. And then what we're going to do now is divide both. Well, let me just finish setting this up and then I'll say what we're going to do. So I'm going to divide both sides by h. And then I'm going to substitute this with this here. Okay, now is where I'm going to need to take my limit, like I did in my, my guess up here. Take my limit as h goes to 0 to get that f is e or that this is equal to f of x. So the idea of this is going to be to use the squeeze theorem. Now let me draw a quick graph. say that this is x and this is u and this is v which is equal to x plus h because it can be greater than or equal to it. So what's going to happen as I take the limit h goes to 0 of f of u I should have written this first
Okay. So u is whatever the lowest value on the interval is for the extreme value theorem. And v is whatever the highest one is. So as h approaches 0, then these are going to start shifting over and they're going to change. And they are going to be different numbers. But what is always going to be true is that whatever that smallest number is, it's going to be smaller than whatever this is, and it's going to be greater than, or and it's going to be less than or equal to whatever v is. So as this starts getting closer and closer to zero, what the point is that they're going to, as h starts getting closer and closer to zero, what the point is is that all of these things are going to approach x. So what happens next is this is an easy limit. It's the limit. So we'll do this one first. The limit as h approaches 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x, where h is equal to g prime of x. So that's easy. But these ones aren't so, e aren't so obvious because it's h and they don't have an h. But from here, it's easy to see that as h approaches 0, u is going to approach x, and v is going to approach x. So the way I evaluate these limits over here is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of u, u approaches x. And this limit is going to be f of x. And same with the limit as v approaches x. f of v. And this is going to be f of x. So what I'm going to get is f of x so the limit as h approaches 0 for g prime of x is equal to f of x by the squeeze theorem so now I go all the way back here and I can check that off. And what it's this is really allows me to write is just something like this. Just to sum up the the fundamental theorem. Basically what it means is that when I take the inter or and I integrate a derivative, it gives me back the original function. Or another way of of writing or this is I think this is technically called the second part of the of the fundamental theorem is just to write well, I like to write it differently. I just write to write, write it like this. Actually, I need more space. I'll write it in a different color about that. That's to say that the integral of some function is equal to its antiderivative, the difference of the antiderivatives for this definite integral for b to a will be equal to the function value of b minus the function value of a. Or it's really the antiderivative, but the anti 
derivative of the derivative is just whatever the regular function would be. So if I were to think of of distance and velocity, it would basically be the distance b minus a. So that's the fundamental theorem of calculus for you.